Hey guys, today is exciting because I'm going to show you how to multi-line dial from the opportunities page. So if you have your sales pipeline built out in the pipelines and opportunities in high level, then you can actually call each person in the stage and not even just normal calling, you can multi-line dial. What I'm going to do today is show you how to have a pipeline with a bunch of people not answering and how to be able to facilitate um, your calls because a lot of people you need to call them multiple times before they'll answer and this is a really good way for your team to be able to call everyone in a timely manner and to make sure that all of your contacts are staying organized and for you to, to be able to reach them really quickly you'll see right now i'm not dispositioning i'm not doing anything but all the contacts are being moved to the next stage so that my team the next day, they can call those people again if they're not answering. And if they don't answer again, all these people are then going to move over here. And then over here, you'll see there's some people over here that I've called five times and they haven't answered. And so that's the other thing I'm going to go through today is how to get your leads to automatically be moving from spot to spot. I've got a big long list right here of the things I want to teach you. We're going to go through how to set up the right custom dispositions for this automation. We're going to go through how to set up your pipeline correctly, and we're going to go through how to actually build the automation. I will show you the automations that I have built inside of my high level so that you can then take them and apply them to your sales team. This video is primarily going to focus on what happens if someone doesn't answer. I'll be releasing another video later that will show how you can then take these contacts once they do answer to then put them into an appointment set pipeline. So we'll get into all of that today. It's just about what to do if someone doesn't answer, what do we do with those contacts? Okay. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing you should know is that I'm using the wave dialer, specifically the multi-line dialer and utilizing their custom dispositions. And I'm also using high level pipelines and high levels automation builder or their workflow builder. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. The first thing we're going to do is look at what our custom dispositions are inside of wave. This is really important because it's through custom dispositions that tags are being added to the contacts and people are being moved from spot to spot. Okay. So to see that you're going to go into your agency view. Once you get to your agency view, you're going to click on wave admin, and that is where you're going to see these call dispositions. I have another video all about call dispositions that you can watch to understand this in more depth. What you need to know for this video is that today I'm going to be using the no answer disposition and the voice message disposition. Now, both of these are automatic. That means that I never have to click to actually say no answer on a contact. It just automatically happens like you saw before. And we are looking at no answer in voice message dispositions because this is basically the same thing. You get this disposition when someone doesn't answer. The only difference is with left voicemail, it means that Wave hit a voicemail box and a voicemail was dropped. But we have we want the same thing after this disposition happens. We want to make another phone call until we can get someone on the phone and eventually set an appointment with them. And once we set an appointment with them, we want that appointment set tag to be added. And then we want them taken out of our no answer pipeline and into our appointment set pipeline. Again, I will be going over that in a different video. For today, we're just going to focus on no answer and left voicemail. Next thing you need to look at is your pipeline. Which pipeline do you want to be using to make your calls? This pipeline that I've designed has all of my new leads that are added into my CRM dumped right here into this column. This is where I was making calls from at the beginning of this video. Every time they didn't answer, which none of them answered, it moved all of them over here into the no answer one. Now tomorrow or in a few hours when I want to call them again, then I can hit this call button and I'll call all of them. If they don't answer, then it's gonna move them over here into no answer too. If they do answer and I book an appointment with them, which is my end goal, or my end goal is to make a sale, right? But I wanna book an appointment with them, then it will take them out of this pipeline and put them into my appointment set pipeline where there's different automations to nurture that lead. Here, 
I want to call them seven times. And after I've called them seven times, then I add a reactivate campaign or a reactivate tag, excuse me. And that puts them into a reactivation campaign where I nurture them a little bit more and hopefully get them to opt into something where I can start calling them again. So that's how that works. I'm going to teach you how to do all of that. So now what you'll need to do is go ahead and set up your pipeline to be whatever you want it to be. It can be like this. I do have a snapshot that you can take. You can also set it up to be whatever you want it to be. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is create an automation, which will automatically add every new contact that has that new lead tag into your sales pipeline. So that's right here. I'll show you what it looks like. My workflow trigger is tag added new lead. And I have that tag added on to every single new lead that is put into my CRM because I know I want to call them. So here I have it create an opportunity and it puts it into the pipeline that I'm using into new leads. And I just have the contact name, the contact source, and that's how it is. And then I remove the contact from the workflow. You're going to see that I'm a little like OCD about having a lot of people inside of different workflows. Once they're through the workflow, I just want to take them out. I want to keep my workflows really clean. So that's what I do. I don't think that that's like the right way to do it. Everyone can do it however they want, but that's what I do. Okay, so let's test this real quick. I'll show you how it works. Let's go into our contacts. I have a few test contacts that we can use. So right here, from Floyd all the way down, we're going to add that new lead tag. And you guys can see what it looks like. So I'll add the tag. Okay. So I added that tag. Okay, there we go. It's been added. And now all of these people right here are being added into my pipeline. So let's hop over there and see what that looks like. Right here. Perfect. They've all been added. So that'll automatically happen now. Every single time someone new is added, I can call them and just be working my leads. Heck yeah. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is then create the automation, which will move people between these different stages. This is really nice. If you have a team that you want to just be working a pipeline, you can have anyone come into this pipeline and just click call and be doing everything that they need to be doing. They don't need to go anywhere else. They can just click call. If someone answers, that profile is going to pop up so they can talk to them. Super great. So let me show you how to build this automation. To have a few different automations. Remember, we're just going through the no answer and left a voicemail. What happens if someone's not picking up or you're leaving a voicemail? How can we move them through those stages? Now, if you guys look at this, you're probably going to be really freaked out because it's a lot of stuff, but it's actually so straightforward. You can totally do it. If you don't want to build it yourself, you can take the snapshot. If you're interested in kind of modifying it a little bit to fit the needs of your team, please reach out to the WAVE team so that they can help you. But I have two triggers, the no answer tag being added and the left voicemail tag being added. Okay. 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 Then I have a condition and that is what tag is currently on the contact. So when we're adding the leads into that new leads column, that new lead tag is on there already. And we don't want to leave the new lead tag on there if we've called them or we've called them multiple times. A new lead, we only want to be on there when it is a fresh new lead that we need to be calling ASAP. So I'm asking the question, what tag is currently on the contact so that I know what to do with the contact? So here, new lead, the tag, on the contact includes new lead, okay? So if I'm calling a new lead and they don't answer or I left that voicemail, then Wave is automatically adding the tag onto the contact. When Wave adds that no answer left voicemail tag onto the contact, this automation is being triggered. And it's going to come in here and it's gonna look, high level is gonna look at what tag is currently on the contact. If it is the new lead tag, then down here, this is going to happen. And I like to lay things out very clean, very straightforward. I don't like to group everything into one section where it's like remove new lead, no answer and left voicemail all in one column. I like to lay it out so I know everything's happening correctly. You can do it how you want, this is how I do it. So here, 
that that contact comes in here and high level's like, okay, it has the new lead tag. We're gonna remove the new lead tag. We're gonna remove the no answer tag that was just added or the left voicemail tag that was just added onto the contact, which triggered this automation. And then it's going to add a new tag, which is no answer dash one tag. And then it is going to move that contact over to the new column. And then it's going to take the contact out of this workflow. So we don't have a bajillion contacts hanging out inside of this workflow at all times. Um, in this, we're having people leave and re-enter a workflow a bunch. So you need to make sure that in your settings, it says allow re-entry, okay? Because you're just gonna have people coming in and out, in and out. So here, I'm gonna zoom back out. Does that make sense? If you have any questions, please drop it in the comments. I will watch for them and make sure to answer them all. So here, no answer, the new lead tags on there, it's moving through here. Next time. If I call that contact again, we've already called them once and they haven't answered. If I call that contact again, then it's going to have that no answer dash one tag on the contact. And if I call them again, wave again is going to leave the no answer or left voicemail tag on the contact. And so this time when it's like looking at what tag is currently on the contact, it's going to say, oh, it already has that no answer one tag on there. So then it's going to remove the no answer tag, which was added again by wave because wave always adds the same contact or the same tag, excuse me, every single time. So it's going to remove the no answer tag that was just added that triggered the automation. Then it's going to remove the left voicemail or the left voicemail tag that was added that triggered. It could be triggered by either of them. I put both here. A contact will never have both of these on it, but I put both here because it could be either tag that was added. Then I'm gonna remove the no answer one tag, and then I'm going to add the no answer two tag because now they haven't answered twice. And then I'm gonna move them to the next stage. And this is what we do every single time. It's just the same thing all the way through until no answer seven. And every single time I call a person, they're going to, and they don't answer, I've left a voicemail. It's going to go through this, different, this automation through these different stages. And the only time that it changes is down here at no answer seven. And that's when I'm going to do remove the no answer tag, remove the left voicemail tag, remove no answer seven tag. And we're going to add the reactivate tag. And this is so the contact is removed from my call pipeline and gets put into a different reactivation pipeline. And that pipeline could be a pipeline where you still are making calls, but maybe you don't wanna be calling them every single day like you were during this little frame of time where they had just opted in. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions? Please let me know. But that is the automation, okay? So here you'll see, I just want every single time a contact comes in, I want high level to look and see what tag is already on the contact and then swap that tag out for a new one and move them to a new column. Make sure that you always save your work. I didn't change anything, but make sure you always save it. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this thing. Let's see how it works. Good opportunities. I've got a bunch of new leads right here. I'm super excited to talk to them. These are all test numbers. None of them are going to answer because that's what we are working on right now. Um, but stick around for the next video so you can see what I'll do when someone does book an appointment. Okay, so I'm going to dial and let's see how this works. Don't worry. I always get nervous they're not going to move over, but they always do. High levels just sometimes a little bit slow, but it's okay. We love it. Does its job. Okay, so you see it's calling all of these people that were inside of this pipeline, and they're all being moved over. And you can do this if you have tons of leads, you can just be calling all of them. Someone else, maybe someone else that's dialing for you or your teammate could be 
working on this set of leads, you know, super awesome. So there we go. It just called through all of them. High level will catch up. There we go. Okay. So tomorrow I'm going to call these people again. And if you don't want to call them from the same number, you can switch what number you're calling them from right here. If you want to be calling from the same number, which is always nice because that builds trust, right? You can be calling them um, from different numbers or the same number. Also, this is something we didn't go over, but I can go over in a future video if you guys are curious. We could make it so that every single time someone moves over to the next stage, you're sending them a text and from the same number that you're using Wave to call with, if that makes sense. Okay, so we talked about a lot. Again, please drop your questions if you have any. Um, check the links below. I've always got more helpful things if you want to check it out. And thanks, guys. Have a great day.